Welcome to Component 1, Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., Public Health, Part 2. This is Lecture A. The component, Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and services are delivered in the U.S. The learning objectives for Public Health Part 2 are to give examples of and explain the general program categories of public health, including communicable disease, chronic disease, terrorism response, and environmental public health. Discuss the activities and achievements of public health in the realm of communicable disease. Compare and contrast the different types of terrorism and the different public health responses. And describe chronic disease activities and achievements of public health and the work of public health in the realm of environmental health hazards. This lecture will cover public health and communicable diseases. Communicable diseases can also be termed infectious or transmittable diseases. They are caused by organisms such as bacteria, protozoans, fungi, or viruses entering the body. The control of infectious diseases can mostly be traced to two advances. First, better sanitation and clean water, which have brought many diseases, even typhoid and cholera, under control. Second, Antimicrobial therapy. The arsenal of medical treatments against infectious diseases has expanded greatly through the discovery of agents such as penicillin. New communicable diseases continue to appear, the emerging infectious diseases, and probably always will. Other diseases continue to evade good control, such as tuberculosis, drug-resistant infections, and so forth but it is encouraging to consider some more details of two of public health's brightest triumphs and how these once fearsome diseases were brought under control, smallpox and polio. Smallpox virus has been sickening populations for thousands of years. In 1796, Edward Jenner discovered that cowpox conferred immunity to smallpox upon milkmaids. In 1800, the technique of smallpox vaccination was introduced into the U.S., and a century and a half later, the U.S. was declared free of smallpox. The International Smallpox Eradication Program was established in 1966, and by 1977, the Global Vaccination Program had effectively eradicated the disease. Routine general vaccination against smallpox was discontinued after eradication of the disease. The virus has been eliminated from the earth, with the exception of some laboratory stockpiles. Are these stockpiles a matter of concern for terrorism risk? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, has detailed plans to protect the U.S. in the case of a smallpox weapon. The plans include deploying teams of medical and public health workers to stop the spread using stockpiled live vaccine to a related virus. Polio is another disease that has been a threat for thousands of years. There is evidence of polio in an Egyptian stone engraving more than 3,000 years old. The polio virus mainly affects children under 5 years of age and is spread by fecal contamination of food or water. The highly contagious virus invades the nervous system. The vast majority of those infected are not seriously affected, but for those who are, the symptoms are severe, including paralysis. In 1955, the Sock polio vaccine was licensed, which led to the rapid decline of polio cases in industrialized nations. Currently, Polio has been effectively eliminated in industrialized countries. However, it still poses a risk in other countries. The World Health Organization, or WHO, continues to strive for global eradication. Public health departments at the state and local level work to prevent communicable disease in the population through a combination of monitoring and surveillance, outbreak investigation, interventions and treatments, and reporting of data to CDC. Federal-level activities by the CDC include gathering national data, 
managing national prevention and surveillance programs, distributing funding, and collaborating in outbreak responses. Outbreak investigations can take many forms and be quite complex. This slide illustrates a fictional and very simplified outbreak investigation of a food poisoning incident. In our fictional example, Public Health first learns about the incident by receipt of laboratory reports positive for foodborne pathogens. Epidemiologists investigate the report, sending additional samples to the public health laboratory to be more closely identified. The epidemiologists trace the illness to a company picnic. Questionnaires are sent to those who are ill, and statistical analysis identifies the problem as a dairy product served at the picnic. Yet more investigation reveals the product was contaminated at the dairy due to a sanitation issue. A product recall is issued. The dairy fixes the problem that led to the contamination. Public health utilizes the data gathered and lessons learned to help prevent future problems. The information is reported to the CDC and becomes part of the national data set. This listing of some communicable disease topics gives a good idea of the diversity involved. We'll look at a few of these in more detail. Rabies is a good example of an animal-related disease. A fatal infection results when the virus is introduced into breaks in the skin, commonly by an animal bite. Public health responses include monitoring for incidents, managing treatment, and encouraging prevention by pet vaccinations. A serious food-related disease is caused by E. coli 0157H7. Incidents are usually traced to food contaminated with cow feces and can be very severe. Public health responds by monitoring, assisting in interventions, investigating outbreaks, and providing education for prevention. Gonorrhea is an example of a sexually transmitted disease. This bacterial infection can lead to permanent health problems. The public health response includes monitoring, interventions, investigation of outbreaks, and education on prevention and treatment. The parasite cryptosporidiosis causes one example of a water-related disease. The parasite is ingested by drinking contaminated water. Public health responses include monitoring, investigation of outbreaks, and education on water treatment. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, can cause a healthcare-related disease if it is introduced in a healthcare setting by visitors or providers. Public health responses include monitoring, investigation of outbreaks, and education for both patients and providers. Chickenpox is an example of childhood disease. This highly contagious viral infection is spread by coughing, sneezing, or contact. Public health response includes monitoring, intervention by vaccination, outbreak investigation, and education on vaccination. The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, can lead to Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. The public health response includes monitoring of disease and treatments, outbreak investigation, and education on prevention and testing. Emerging infectious diseases mentioned earlier in this unit continue to appear. One example is dengue infection native to many popular tourist destinations in Latin America, Asia, and Puerto Rico. This mosquito-transmitted disease is appearing more often in the United States. Public health response includes monitoring, outbreak investigations, and education on avoidance and on mosquito control. This concludes Lecture A of Public Health Part 2. In summary, the topic of communicable diseases is discussed in detail using notable examples, including smallpox and polio. Public health disease outbreak investigations are discussed using a simplified food poisoning incident.